here's a thought that might seem a little wild. Did people living thousands of years ago ever see a blue lobster? It's a strange question, I know. But it makes you think about a lot of things. It makes you think about how rare blue lobsters are. It makes you think about how ancient people lived. It makes you think about what they ate and what they noticed. First, let's talk about what a blue lobster is. Most lobsters, the ones you see in tanks at the grocery store, are a sort of dull greenish brown color. They only turn bright red when they're cooked. That's because of pigments in their shell. But a blue lobster? That's different. It's a genetic thing. It's a mutation. Their bodies produce too much of a certain protein. This protein mixes with a red pigment. It makes a bright, almost electric blue color. It's really striking to see. Now how rare is one of these blue lobsters? It's really, really rare. The numbers people throw around are usually like 1 in 2 million, or even 1 in 3 million. Think about that for a second. Imagine catching 2 million lobsters. That's a huge number of lobsters. And you might only find one blue one in all of them. That's how uncommon they are. This rarity is the main thing we need to keep in mind. It's not like seeing a common fish. Or even a strangely colored bird. A blue lobster is a real outlier. It stands out in the ocean. And it stands out in a fishing net. But you have to be incredibly lucky to find one. Why are they so rare? It goes back to that genetic mutation. It's not a common trait to have. Most lobsters have the regular genetic makeup, the one that gives them their usual mottled color. So, this color actually helps them. It helps them blend in with the rocky seabed. It helps them hide from things that want to eat them. Uh, a blue lobster, on the other hand, might not blend in as well. That bright blue color could make it stand out more to predators. Things like cod, haddock, or even seals. So you could argue that being blue isn't a great survival strategy. If you stand out, you're more likely to be eaten. This means blue lobsters might not live as long. They might not have as many chances to mate and pass on their blue genes. This could be another reason why they stay so rare in the wild. Even today, with all our modern fishing boats and traps, finding a blue lobster is still big news. There are fishermen who catch one off and take pictures. They call the local news. Sometimes they donate the lobster to an aquarium. People get excited because it's so unusual. It's a moment of wonder. It shows us how diverse nature can be even in places like the ocean floor. So when we ask if ancient people saw one, we're asking about something very specific. We're asking if someone thousands of years ago had the kind of luck that even today is celebrated. They would have needed to be in the right place at the right time. And they would have needed to catch that one in two million lobster. You know, it's, it's a huge hurdle right from the start. It's not just about seeing it. It's about knowing what you're seeing. It's about recognizing it as different. Most ancient people probably didn't spend their days thinking about lobster genetics. They thought about getting food, they thought about surviving, but a color so striking might have caught their eye. Even if they didn't understand why it was blue, think about the sheer volume of lobsters needed to find one blue one. Modern fishing fleets catch millions of lobsters every year across vast stretches of ocean. Even with that kind of effort, blue lobsters are still a novelty. Ancient people didn't have that kind of scale. They didn't have huge trawlers. They didn't have thousands of traps spread across miles of seabed. Their fishing was much more local. It was much more limited. This smaller scale of fishing would have made their chances even smaller. The odds were already stacked against them, and they were stacked even higher for ancient people. We're talking about pure chance here, like winning a very specific lottery. A lottery where most people don't even know they're playing. That's the baseline for our discussion. The blue lobster is a needle in a haystack a very large, very deep, very wet haystack. And ancient people had much smaller magnets to find it. This extreme rarity is the core challenge for our question. Now let's think about ancient people themselves. Did they even care about lobsters? Did they catch them? Did they eat them? Um, the answer is yes. Many ancient cultures lived by the sea. They relied on it for food. Fish, shellfish, seaweed. These were all part of their diet. Coastal communities were common in many parts of the world. Think about the shores of Europe, the Mediterranean, the Atlantic coast, places where lobsters live today. People there developed ways to get food from the ocean. They learned about tides. They learned about the habits of marine animals. This knowledge was essential for their survival. How did they catch things like lobsters? They didn't have modern traps. They didn't have big fishing nets like we do. But they had their own methods. They used spears, they used simple nets, they used weirs, which are fences built in shallow water to trap fish. And they might have used simple pots or traps made from woven reeds or wood. These could have been weighted down to the seafloor. They were probably not as efficient as modern traps, but they worked. We have evidence of this. 
Archaeologists find middens, which are old trash piles. These middens often contain shells. Shells from clams, oysters, mussels, and yes, sometimes lobster shells. These shells tell us what ancient people were eating. They show us that lobsters were on the menu. They were a source of protein, a good source of food, especially in coastal areas where other food sources might have been scarce at certain times of the year. Think about the Norse people or the Celtic tribes along the Atlantic coast. They were skilled seafarers. They knew the ocean well, they would have harvested its bounty. Lobsters would have been part of that. The Romans also had access to lobsters. They probably considered them a delicacy, as did many other coastal groups. So ancient people definitely interacted with lobsters. They caught them. They ate them. The question isn't if they saw lobsters, it's if they saw a blue lobster. And that brings us back to the rarity problem. Their fishing methods, while effective for basic sustenance, were much less extensive than ours. Um, they probably mostly fished closer to shore. Um, in shallower waters, they might have collected lobsters by hand uh, during low tide, or used simple hand lines, or small rudimentary traps. They weren't dragging huge nets across the ocean floor. They weren't setting thousands of traps in deep water. This limited scale of fishing means they were seeing fewer individual lobsters overall. If you're only catching a few dozen lobsters a week or a month, your chances of hitting that one in two million jackpot are even smaller. It's simple math. More lobsters caught means more chances to find the rare one. Fewer lobsters caught means fewer chances. We also need to consider the type of lobsters they were most likely catching. Lobsters live in rocky crevices. They like cold water, they can be found at various depths, but ancient fishers without sophisticated gear would have been limited. They might have primarily caught smaller, younger lobsters that live closer to shore or those that ventured into intertidal zones during certain tides. A blue lobster could be any size. But if their average catch was from a more limited part of the lobster population, that also narrows the scope. Uh, it's not just about the total number of lobsters in the ocean, it's about the number of lobsters that ancient humans were likely to encounter. Despite these limitations, it's fair to say that ancient people in lobster-rich areas had opportunities. They spent a lot of time by the sea. They were keen observers of their environment. Their lives depended on it. They would have handled thousands of fish and countless pieces of seafood over their lifetimes. That's a lot of individual creatures to look at. So, while their methods were simple, their exposure was constant. A, a fisherman spending every day by the sea year after year would accumulate many encounters with marine life. This continuous interaction means that, over many generations, across many communities, the possibility of someone encountering a blue lobster isn't zero. It's just incredibly, incredibly small. It's like saying someone could win the lottery by buying one ticket a week. It's possible, sure, uh, but not very likely, especially if the lottery is drawn only once every few years. And ancient fishing was like a very small, very infrequent lottery, but it was happening over thousands of years. Across many different coastal communities, that cumulative effect adds a tiny bit more weight to the possibility. But still, the main takeaway for this chapter is that yes, ancient people had the means to catch lobsters. They ate them, they lived in the right places, but their methods were not on the scale of modern fishing. This limits the total number of lobsters they would have seen, which directly impacts the chances of seeing a blue one. Let's think about the environment back then. Was it different for lobsters? Were there more of them? Or fewer? This could influence the chances of seeing a blue one. Today, lobster populations face a lot of pressures overfishing in some areas, pollution, climate change affecting ocean temperatures. These things can impact how many lobsters are around. In ancient times, these specific pressures mostly didn't exist. There was no industrial fishing, no massive trawlers, no widespread chemical pollution. So in some ways, lobster populations might have been healthier. They might have been more abundant in certain areas. With fewer human impacts, their natural cycles could play out more freely. More lobsters in the ocean would, in theory, slightly increase the chances of a blue one appearing. If there are 10 million lobsters instead of 5 million, then statistically you might expect two blue ones instead of one. It's still a tiny fraction, but more is more. However, more lobsters doesn't necessarily mean more lobsters caught by humans. As we talked about, ancient fishing was local and small scale. So even if the overall population was bigger, the human interaction with that population was still limited. Uh, we also need to think about natural predators. In ancient times, the oceans were probably full of more large, healthy fish. It's like huge cod, halibut, sharks, seals, porpoises. These animals eat lobsters. 
So even if there were more lobsters, there might also have been more things trying to eat them. This could have kept their numbers in check naturally. It could also mean that a rare blue lobster, standing out more, might have been eaten sooner. Before a human could catch it. Climate also plays a role. The Earth's climate has changed a lot over thousands of years. We've had ice ages, we've had warmer periods, uh, ocean temperatures fluctuate, lobsters prefer colder waters. So, in periods when the North Atlantic or European coastal waters were colder, the areas suitable for lobsters might have been larger. Or, their populations might have thrived more. For example, during the Little Ice Age, which happened roughly from the 14th to the 19th century, northern waters were colder. This might have been good for lobster populations, but this is still a relatively recent ancient time. If we go back further, to the Stone Age or Bronze Age, the climate was different again. It's hard to pin down exact lobster numbers from those far-off times. We don't have records, obviously. What we do know is that marine ecosystems are complex. They've always been changing. Sometimes slowly, sometimes quickly. It, it, it's possible that in some ancient periods, in some locations, conditions were just right for a booming lobster population. A population that was less affected by human fishing than today. But this is all speculation. We can't say for sure that lobster numbers were vastly higher across the board. We can only infer based on general environmental conditions. And even if they were higher, the extreme rarity of the blue mutation would still be the dominant factor. Consider this, let's say lobster populations were 10 times bigger in ancient times than they are today. That's a huge increase. If the odds are 1 in 2 million, then with 10 times more lobsters, the odds of a blue one existing would be 10 times higher. But for a single human to catch it, their individual chances are still tied to their fishing effort. And that was still very small. So while environmental factors might have meant more lobsters overall, it doesn't dramatically change the individual human's chance of seeing one. It merely increases the pool from which that one in two million lobster could emerge. The act of finding it remains incredibly difficult. It's also worth noting that lobster habitats themselves haven't changed much. They still prefer rocky bottoms, they still hide in crevices, they still live in the same general regions of the world. So the places ancient people would have looked for lobsters are largely the same places we look today. Uh, the search area hasn't really shifted, this chapter really highlights the uncertainty. We can guess about ancient populations, we can make educated statements, but we don't have hard data. The takeaway is that while some environmental factors might have been more favorable for lobsters in ancient times, the fundamental challenge of finding a blue one due to its extreme rarity remains. It's still a lottery ticket no matter how many other tickets are being printed. Let's say, by some incredible stroke of luck, an ancient person did catch a blue lobster. What then? Would they have cared? Would they have seen it as special or just as another lobster? This is where it gets really interesting. Ancient people's lives were very practical. They needed food, they needed tools, they needed shelter. A lobster, no matter its color, was primarily food. It was calories, it was protein, they might have been more concerned with its size and how much meat it had rather than its exact shade of blue. But humans are also curious. We notice things that are different. A bright blue lobster is certainly different. It would stand out in a catch of dull brown lobsters. I think anyone from any time period would pause for a moment when they saw something so unexpectedly vibrant. Would they have named the color? How did ancient people describe colors? That's a whole field of study. Some cultures have fewer specific color words than we do today. They might have grouped blue and green together, for instance. But their eyes work the same way ours do. They perceived the light waves, they saw the color. They just might not have had a specific word for electric blue lobster. They might have called it sea colored, or sky colored, or just the strange one. The real question is about significance. Did it mean anything to them? A bright blue animal might have been seen as a good omen. Or a bad omen. It might have been thought to have special powers. It might have been considered sacred. Simply is simply a quirk of nature. It all depends on their specific beliefs and cultural context. We have almost no way of knowing how they would have interpreted such a rare sight. There's no ancient text describing a blue sea creature that looked like a crab but was bigger. No cave painting of a vivid blue crustacean. If such records existed, it would make our job a lot easier. The lack of such records is a big point. Ancient people didn't write scientific papers. They didn't take photos. They didn't have museums to display natural oddities. Their ways of recording things were different. Oral traditions were huge. Stories passed down from generation to generation. But how many details survive in an oral tradition? Would the specific color of a lobster be remembered for hundreds of years? Probably not. 
The story might become the time old Grack caught a very special lobster. The specific color might fade from the retelling. They might have, might have carved symbols on rocks or painted on cave walls, but these were usually for important events or spiritual meanings or hunting stories. A single oddly colored lobster might not have made the cut. Um, it might have been seen as a minor curiosity, not something worth immortalizing in stone. So even if someone saw one, it's highly unlikely they would have left behind any direct evidence. This makes it impossible for us to confirm. We're left trying to imagine their perspective. We're trying to put ourselves in their shoes. Consider the context, life was hard for ancient people. Every day was about survival. A strange color might have been interesting for a moment. Uh, but then it was time to cook the lobster and feed the family. The wonder of it might have been brief. And what if it wasn't seen as something special? What if it was just seen as a slightly odd-looking meal? Then there would be even less reason to remember it, even less reason to talk about it. Um, it would just be another thing that happened one day, like finding a strangely shaped rock or a crooked tree. So the act of observation is one thing. The act of giving it significance and recording it is another. For something as rare as a blue lobster, even if seen, the chances of it being remembered and passed down in a way that we could discover today are incredibly slim. This lack of evidence isn't proof it didn't happen. It just means we have no way to know if it did. It's a silence in the historical record. A silence that is completely understandable given the nature of ancient human life and communication. It's a big hurdle. The rarity is one thing. The lack of any means for durable record keeping for such a fleeting observation is another. These two factors combine to make our question very difficult to answer with any certainty. It forces us to rely on probability and inference, and those can only take us so far. So, did ancient people ever see a blue lobster? After looking at all the angles, it's time to put it all together. Let's recap the main points. First, the blue lobster is incredibly rare. We're talking one in two million or even more. That's the biggest factor working against the idea. It's a true natural anomaly. Second, ancient human fishing methods were simple. They were local, they were small scale. They didn't catch the sheer numbers of lobsters that modern fishing fleets do. This means the overall number of lobsters passing through human hands was much, much smaller in ancient times. Fewer lobsters handled means fewer chances to spot the rare blue one. Third, while ancient lobster populations might have been larger in some areas due to less human impact, this doesn't dramatically change the individual ancient person's chances. The rarity of the mutation itself is the bottleneck. More lobsters overall doesn't make a 1 in 2 million chance, much more likely for a single fisher with a few traps. Well, fourth, even if an ancient person did catch a blue lobster, there's almost no way they would have recorded it for us to find today. They didn't have our science or our ways of documenting things. A blue lobster might have been a brief curiosity, a good meal, or maybe even had some superstitious meaning. But it's highly improbable that it would have become a lasting historical record. Oral traditions change over time. Carvings and paintings were reserved for different kinds of stories. So, putting it all together, what does that leave us with? The chances are incredibly, incredibly small. It's not impossible, of course. Miracles happen. Unlikely events occur. Someone, somewhere, at some point in ancient history could have been that one in two million lucky person. They could have pulled up a pot or spotted a blue flash in a tidal pool, and for a moment, they would have seen something truly unique. But thinking about it logically, based on the evidence and probabilities, it's highly improbable. It's, it's one of those things that exists in the realm of maybe, but we'll never know. There's no direct proof. We don't have a record. We don't have a blue lobster shell from an ancient midden. That doesn't mean it absolutely didn't happen, but when you combine extreme rarity with limited observation opportunities and a complete lack of lasting record keeping for such an event, the conclusion leans very heavily towards probably not. It's, it's like asking if an ancient person saw a snowflake with a perfect 24-point symmetry. Such a snowflake might exist, but the chances of someone noticing it, appreciating its perfect form, and then telling someone in a way that would be remembered for thousands of years is almost zero. The blue lobster is similar. A beautiful, rare occurrence, but one that is unlikely to have left a trace in history. The beauty of this question is that it highlights the vastness of time and the smallness of individual human experiences. Over thousands of years across countless lives, many improbable things must have happened. But most of them went unrecorded, they were simply part of the flow of life. So I think it's safest to say that it's extremely unlikely. But it's a fun thought experiment. It makes us appreciate how much we know about the natural world today. And how much ancient people, despite their deep connection to nature, were limited in what they could observe and record. 
the blue lobster remains a modern marvel, a surprise for today's fishers, and a very, very remote possibility for their ancient counterparts.